I want to thank uh, the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation for giving me the opportunity to talk about Amtrak this morning. Um, Amtrak, the concept, was developed after the Virginia Tech tragedy. We at the Mental Health Board, after the tragedy, looked at our emergency response plan and realized that although we had a good plan in place, we felt we wanted to be more proactive rather than reactive. We wanted to focus on preventing something like that occurring on one of our campuses. So we sat down with our partners at Youngstown State University who we work very closely with and we're involved in a number of different programs. And the concept for Amtrak was, was uh, uh, started. We heard about the funding from the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation and we submitted a um, application and we were fortunate enough to be funded in the spring of 08. We are very, very grateful to the, Morgan, to the Margaret Clark Morgan Foundation, Mr. Keller, the Board of Trustees, and those individuals, Tom, Vicki, who have helped us through the evolution of Amtrak. We spent the next six months working closely with Youngstown State University and the Criminal Justice Coordinating Center of Excellence housed at Neo-UCOM that you heard Natalie speak of to develop our curriculum and our outcome measures. And we worked very hard at making sure that we uh, presented a program that we felt would meet many different needs on the community uh, and in the campus. We used the recommendations from the review panel uh, of the commission um, appointed by the governor of Virginia. And if any of you have taken the time or haven't taken the time to read that report, I, I recommend that you do so. The recommendations looked at what happened during that tragedy, what happened before that tragedy, and um, recommendations to help prevent things from like that happening in the future. What we noticed in, that, um, in those recommendations was that many people had information about the perpetrator, uh, Cho, but nobody knew what to do with that information. There was no what we came to term a gatherer or keeper of the dots, and we wanted to create that on our campus. So we focused the training on giving our faculty and staff resources, not just information, but resources, people that they could turn to. The two-day training, which was broken into four-hour segments, focused on first the state of mental health on campus, similar to what Dr. K uh, presented this morning, an abbreviated version, but giving them an idea of why we needed to have this. We then tried to put a face on mental illness to break down the stigma associated we had an individual talk about his experience with bipolar disorder while he was in college, and then had video vignettes to show uh, the participants, the faculty and staff, that the people who were dealing with mental illness looked exactly like you and I. And they were you and I, people who had either family members or our own personal struggles with mental illness. We then had Dr. Muniz give his uh, Mental Health 101 uh, lecture from CIT on the signs and symptoms of mental illness so that they would know the basic signs to look out for in, in our students and our faculty. We then had an expert from suicide intervention come in and talk about the signs and symptoms of suicide and what to look for and how to intervene appropriately with someone who they thought might be at risk. We tried to examine the issues of FERPA and HIPAA, the statutes which govern the sharing of information uh, so that folks would know what they could share and when they could share. We then had uh, an expert in communication come in and talk with our faculty and staff about how to talk with individuals who they felt might be at risk um, and how to collect those dots and how to connect the dots. And then perhaps the most important part of our training was the panel discussion that we, we had at the end of the training. This was comprised of people from the university, police department, the counseling center, the office of student affairs, the disciplinary committees, the disability uh, department, we brought these people together and had them talk about what the, uh, the faculty and staff could do if they noticed someone who was having an issue, what they would like them to do, and then we gave the faculty and staff an opportunity to ask questions of them. And that proved probably to be the most important piece of this program. Because from the um, session evaluations that we received and the anecdotal comments, that that gave them an opportunity to talk about maybe things that had happened in their departments before that they weren't sure how to handle or to talk about university protocol and what needed to be changed. And the Vice President of Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Cynthia Anderson, sat in on those panel discussions and she took a lot of that information and molded it into a campus-wide response to any type of emergency. We had our first training session in the fall of 08 where we had 176 participants and our subsequent trainings, we've had over 300 participants during those um, uh, presentations of MTRAC. 
We use session evaluations to give us some immediate feedback, but also the good folks at the Criminal Justice Coordinating Center of Excellence did some outcome measures, um, pre and post test measures. And we've learned that over the time, we've had some sustainability in our learning. Um, more specifically, positive changes in attitudes towards individuals with mental health issues. Uh, increased knowledge of mental health resources on campus. Increased knowledge in what to do in a mental health crisis, specifically those who might be dealing with some type of suicide issue. Uh, and increased comfort in discussing these issues with students. Where we ha uh, need more work is in the FERPA and HIPAA issues. That seems, seems to be a kind of confusing um, concept for folks and we need to, to adapt our training. More importantly, YSU has inst instituted a number of different programs to help the faculty and staff. They have the student threat assessment team where individuals can deposit the dots. Um, to date, they've had 24 um, cases that they have dealt with from something as simple as needing to change a roommate to connecting someone with a psychiatrist to secure psychotropic medication. But this gave the campus community uh, a feeling of there was someone that was looking at all the, all the information and all the dots and they could synthesize it. So the STAT team has been very important. Uh, they've also alerted the, or instituted the uh, text alert and email alert system, which fortunately we haven't had to use for a similar incident like Virginia Tech, but we have used it certainly during our weather emergencies over the past six months. And the campus-wide speaker system that has been um, implemented, which we can put um, emergency type um, alerts out to either the whole campus or individual buildings. And this has all come about because of the discussion that we had with the administration. And we're very excited about continuing this program. The Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Cynthia Anderson, has since been named the President of the University in the last month, and we are thrilled about that. She will be uh, taking office in July, and she and I have discussed needing to continue the program, maybe adapt it a little bit. We learned that um, four hours at one shot was a little too much for some of our, our university um, personnel, but we are going to revamp that, uh, minimize it in some ways, and continue to have updates so that not only do the, this, do the discussions continue between faculty and administration, but also that they are aware of what resources are available.